The idea that the large banks will never embrace XRP has recently gained considerable traction, even inside the XRP community. Ripple has turned its back on banks. The banks are no longer a factor. Guys, I've been stating for a very long time that I believe this story to be entirely false. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate that there is absolutely no way by showing you a brand new clip that was recently made public. Ripple is shifting its focus away from banks. And now that the lawsuit is done, they are actually gaining a lot of ground. You won't want to miss seeing this clip. I also want to discuss several conspiracies near the end of the film. We recently watched a brand new video of one of the key figures at the Federal Reserve discussing impending cyber attacks. Guys, I'm going to demonstrate exactly how Ripple could enter this equation. Make sure you watch the entire video to get that. This video clip is amazing. I want to briefly go over something that recently came out to start off this video. And it's actually rather thrilling. The XRP community has been anticipating it for some time. And that is how the AMM that was introduced to the XRP ledger perform in the test. Before actually voting on whether or not AMMs will go live on the XRP ledger, many validators wanted to witness this. Now, I won't lie. I'm not an expert in deciphering these figures. I'm not a specialist, but from what I gather from looking at this, it appears that AMMs will place some strain on the ledger. This could reduce the maximum number of transactions the XRP ledger can handle per second by around half. The good news is that we haven't even come close to achieving that number of transactions per second yet. And it's highly likely that in the future, if we do need to increase the number of transactions per second, we can do so by including more upgrades into the XRP ledger, meaning that the AMM's limitation will never be a problem. Now, everything else still needs to be resolved. However, I'd want to quickly discuss the advantages of an AMM. And that increases the XRP ledger's liquidity. The fact that the decentralized exchange isn't actually being used all that much is currently one of the major problems with the XRP ledger. Additionally, there is no liquidity pool. Pools of liquidity that may be utilized to trade assets against one another are one of the most crucial features that some of the biggest networks have. As the XRP ledger develops into a neutral sediment layer between different currencies, this will become increasingly important. Different nations will be able to build pools between their two currencies and conduct instant trades between those two currencies thanks to liquidity pools and AMMs. As a result, Ripple will be able to use their ODL model without relying on centralized exchanges, making it faster, more effective, and all around a better product for everyone attempting to use it. Overall, the XRP ledger is about to have a very interesting development. It will enable us to borrow XRP from these pools and earn a real yield on our holdings. And I believe it will provide us with a ton of hitherto unattainable technical capabilities. These tests were crucial since they demonstrated to the validators that this would not significantly harm the network. These tests were crucial in convincing the validators that the network wouldn't be overloaded. Additionally, the advantages I just mentioned will make the effort worthwhile. It was therefore exciting to see this information disclosed at last, and I'll undoubtedly provide more updates in the future along with further professional viewpoints on this. Like I said, I only gave it a cursory glance and then told you what I could infer from it. Therefore, let's proceed. And now I'd like to discuss the myth that banks are turning away from businesses like Ripple Ripple, which is turning away from the banks. They won't collaborate. This story has been discussed a lot, especially by some of our community's most intelligent members, for whom I have a great deal of respect. And I'm not trying to convince you that you were mistaken. Rather, I'm just repeating what I've been saying for a while. The banks are turning away from Ripple, and Ripple isn't turning away from the banks. And I just want to provide you evidence that the banks are still trying to sell us their products to you right now by saying that we still want to use Ripple Ripple. Because I believe that everyone needs to grasp this in order to disprove the myth that people aren't drifting apart. Pay attention to this before we break it down. Observe correct, and once more, I'm not an authority on it. However, I believe they first approached us some years ago. However, they were now involved in various legal disputes in the US. Yes. You only get one chance to make a first impression, so our advice to them was to return after that was resolved. Additionally, even if this legal dispute doesn't end well for you, they still came out on top. They approached us once more after the verdict in the US court case and said, look, we're going to take a closer look at it. I won't pretend to be an authority on the subject, but we might consider promoting their product. Again, bio beware. We'll announce this new technology to our members. According to what I can tell, it can produce real-time financial transfers and they appear to have several checks and balances in place. There were numerous people from the major banks present at the briefing when I wrote the post, and they all showed a keen interest in it. It is therefore a reality, but it won't be clear until later how it translates into genuine solutions for our members. There were many bank representatives present, and he then claimed that the legal dispute was the main factor in our decision to put off implementing Ripple's products. Guys, I've been repeating this on this channel for a really long time. Until the dispute was settled, none of the major institutions would cooperate with Ripple, 
He's just told you this after all. He stated that although there was a lot of uncertainty as a result of the court case, he was interested in implementing Ripple's technology using XRP. After the conclusion of the case, they are reconsidering their stance. What more did he say exactly? Many significant banks also attended this meeting to examine Ripple's products. Guys, Ripple is not changing its strategy toward banks. Being involved in the SEC case prevented banks from working with Ripple since they are fairly conservative institutions. Companies like money transmitters that could afford to cooperate with Ripple during the litigation allowed Ripple to take on a little bit more risk. However, banks have to exercise extreme caution. But that relationship is quickly shifting now that the lawsuit is concluded. And from what we can tell, these banks have a clear business case for employing XRP and Ripple. You could tell that he made a point of stressing the demand for immediate payments. He said that was something that wasn't offered under the current system, which it actually isn't. But he is saying that they require this technology and that the ongoing legal matter is the only reason they haven't used it yet. I've been bringing up this topic for a very long time. And as I've already mentioned, I always offer you guys my honest assessments on the causes of some of these stuff. However, I could never be certain. This is a really crucial piece of information for demonstrating that everything I've said is accurate. These large financial organizations and banks require Ripple's technology. To revamp their payment method, they want XRP. As a result of Ripple being virtually held back by one of the most powerful regulators in the world and the most significant financial ecosystem in the United States, we have seen a delayed spread of this. But now that Ripple has defeated the SEC, XRP is clear enough for these institutions to use. They will now begin to view this thing very differently. And the biggest banks, who are still in the middle of the world, the most conservative institutions, will begin to take a look at this. We are going to have some clarity to actually start exploring with the product after previously being afraid to touch it. The technology still needs to be shown off. Will the technology actually transform society? Will they genuinely alter their payment processes, and will they want to use it more frequently in the future? To me, the answer is a resounding yes. The regulators were unable to stop Ripple because they managed to get around them. Now the question is simply whether or not their items live up to our expectations. This, in my opinion, is the simple part that will start blowing folks away at this point in particular. But I merely believe that it is crucial to comprehend this, because so many people, particularly very intelligent people in our community, have long claimed that Ripple no longer collaborates with banks. It will not take place. Right now, they are informing you that Ripple is collaborating with banks, that they are meeting with banks, that they are meeting with Ripple, and that they intend to extend that role in the future. To see where this goes has me incredibly pumped. Ripple collaborates not only with these institutions, but also with the central banks. Since Ripple has clarity, I believe that things can start moving quickly, which is exactly what this guy was saying. And I want to wrap up this video by moving on to a slightly more conspiratorial segment. The XRP community has been discussing cyber attacks for a very long time. And it always came from these strange players who didn't have a lot of international credibility. They appeared to be repeatedly brought up at these gatherings, but they were never that recent. But in this brand new video, the chairman of the Federal Reserve speaks candidly about the potential consequences of a cyber attack. And I want you to pay close attention to what he says because you'll hear him repeatedly bringing up Ripple, not Ripple the firm, but Ripple the word, again and over again. But if I reveal to you that the Federal Reserve official talking about the hype once worked for Ripple, it could land a little bit different. I'll let you form your own conclusions once you listen to this clip. But despite the fact that I don't pay much attention to conspiracy theories, this is one of the things I heard. However, this is one of the few things I overheard that actually made me pause and think, hmm, that's kind of funny right there. Take note of this. The interconnectedness in this area as well as the financial risk are very significant. What do you think about the cost and effect on the financial system of this interconnectedness within the financial system? First of all, Lisa, I must say that I really believe you are correct. There are two types of system costs or hazards when considering cyber risk. The direct cost is one of them. Issue and incursion both exist. You must deal with the incursion. There has to be a patch applied. In the grand scheme of things, those expenses are really insignificant. However, the way these hazards are connected to one another is what poses the real significant risks and costs. Therefore, if you give it some thought, you can see how intricately connected our financial system is. Additionally, if a significant institution is the target of a particularly damaging cyber attack, the entire financial system may be affected. It could happen through channels for the payment system or for the provision of liquidity. As a result, the ripple effects might be enormous. If a bank must disconnect itself in order to defend the rest of the system against a cyber attack, this disconnecting has unintended consequences that could result in bank failures. Because of the financial system's intricate interconnections, we therefore need to pay close attention not only to the immediate threats of a cyber attack, 
but also to these possible knock-on repercussions. The phrase ripple effects was used quite frequently in that sentence. We heard ripple four times in the brief period of one minute. This person formerly worked for ripple. Additionally, it directly contributes to the long-discussed cyber attack scenario, from which the additional P would later emerge. Whether or not I think everything is related, I don't really know. Even yet, I still found it to be quite intriguing, and I believe it's something to pay close attention to because I do believe a cyber attack is entirely plausible. Do we notice a new system on the other side if that does occur? Tell me in the comments section below. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did, as they really do matter a lot.